Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. And when I said that there was a lot going on, I definitely wasn't kidding. It's been completely crazy. But as I've said in the previous video, we have some celebrating to do. We are not at 80,000 subscribers just quite yet, but it doesn't matter, all right? Because if this video hits 1,500 likes within 24 hours, we're giving away 100 XRP. To some people might be a little, to some people might be a lot, I don't care. Just make sure you press the like button, subscribe and comment something down below as that is all you have to do to enter and we'll keep this up for a little while, all right? So just enter in every video and whenever we hit that, we'll just give it away uh, and that is that. <laughs> First article of today is FLR, DFLR airdrops explained by XRP community rates revealed. Now, this is actually not something new, yet I've noticed a lot of people have no idea how exactly this is going to work. And let me know down below, all right? This is very important. Were you an XRP holder before 2021? Just put yes down below or no down below. Uh, further of all, it's not going to have too much relevance except for, for this little part here, which is if you had XRP before the 12th of December, you are eligible for all of this. If you bought XRP after the 12th of December of 2020, then this all is not too relevant for you, except for the fact that you can buy FLR, which is going to be given out for free to everybody who had XRP before December 12th at a one-to-one -one ratio. If you buy that, then one week later, there will be a snapshot for DFLR. So if you see this one, let me let's see if we can actually um, see the official tweet from status of course he always has these types of things how to earn yield with spark and fxrp here is spark earn FLR rewards earn crypto xrp ltc doge btc uh, okay so there's actually nothing as to how you can claim it i guess that's the the previous one which is not shown right here but it's pretty damn simple the snapshot was december 12th for this first spark it's not out just quite yet so people always commenting Dusty, why didn't I get my, my flair quite yet on Coinbase? Some people have it on Bitru. Those are IOUs, which are basically contracts between the exchange and you that eventually you'll get some coins. It's nothing official just quite yet, as it's not even live. It will get live hopefully next month, maybe the month afterwards. Maybe the month afterwards, we do not really know. Something new is coming out, though, which is eventually going to be Flare Finance's DFLR, which is based upon Spark. This was based upon XRP. This one is based upon Spark. So once you get your Flare, uh, we'll get 15% of the total because that's, again, the distribution, what it's going to be looking like. 50% up front and then 3 to 4%, 2 to 4% exactly, every single month afterwards. And then... Uh, after one week in, so we all have 15%, then one week in, there's going to be an airdrop for Spark holders. Again, that's basically free. Or for people who didn't have it before on December 12th, XRP, then again, you have to buy it. And then 30, or, oh, it's actually, sorry guys, it's not one week, it's one month. Snapshot date FLR balance is 30 days after Flare Network's launch, which is made to July. So when we get those coins, 30%, then one month afterwards, we get this. Uh, here you can see the claim ratio. Distribution date takes about 7 to 10 days after the Flare Finance uh, snapshot. It's going to be pretty simple, pretty quick. It's just that you need to know about this, right? You need to know about this really quickly because it's basically going to be free money. The exact ratios, though, please do not worry yourself about this as it really does not matter what type of ratio it's going to be, right? If you really think it's going to matter, think again because everybody's going to get the exact same amount of free coins. So the ratio, it literally does not matter at all. Please don't get it the wrong way. Uh, then that was on the XRP front. I have some more on XRP coming, but I just wanted to quickly come in and state what I meant earlier with Cardano. All right. I talked about ADA in my previous video, but I don't think I made my point quite clear enough. And that is that in the short term here, ADA can have a huge boost in terms of price. And you need to know that it's mostly because there have been some huge institutions buying it, but of course they don't buy it for no reason. We first of all have the great update coming up, uh, upgrade I should say, but also even though a lot of people are putting up bearish price predictions, I think that's all really, really short term because if we check the honest medium term here, there's not really much putting it down, all right? And if we're really looking at it from a bigger perspective, there's a ton of big guys. For example, we saw that artist a couple of days ago and just a lot of other investors around this world coming into it and getting excited about it because, well, it's a very big competitor to Ethereum, but also think about it. 
IOG CEO estimates that Cardano will be adopted at scale within three to five years. That's basically the understanding behind why it should be bullish medium term, basically a couple years. Because again, they have a plan, they have a vision, but mostly on the short term. We got, for example, the Coinbase announcement, which could be any one of these days, right? That's just a small example. Or some advancements over in Africa with their talks. Just a small example of what they wanted to get done in February, but didn't work out. So most likely it's going to be March or April. And thus, whenever one of those announcements comes live, it usually does pretty good for the price. Again, into consideration already that we have another upgrade coming up in this uh, proximity. Yeah, Cardano is definitely a good hold to have, in my opinion. A lot of people will just keep speculating on that one and keep holding through. I'm going to quickly tell you guys that these estimates from Charles Hoskinson are not necessarily something to hold or hold closely or stick by because he's also said that Cardano might become the first to a crypto and that the whole crypto bull run would take another 10 or 11 years to envelop or develop. Didn't really work out the way he planned it. So again, disregard his uh, estimates for years. But hey, it's still interesting that he said that, right? Um, and then let's move on. Uh, let's see. I had Ripple here. Ripple CEO reveals what will happen if SEC wins the lawsuit. The reason I don't really like covering these types of articles is because, well, they kind of draw you into a certain way of thinking, which is what if Ripple really loses, right? And as of this point, I don't really think they can lose. But, you know, I guess we always have to look at every side to then discuss whether or not something sounds uh, possible. And in this case here, there's a possibility that Ripple will lose mostly on the idea that there's some crazy manipulation going on which just wants them to lose basically but if they were to lose then only in the u.s would the trading stop some of the partnerships in the u.s would stop uh, and garland house says they won't launch a new crypto company in the u.s because well if they were to stop it that means that innovation over there is being halted so that definitely wouldn't really be a smart thing for them to do uh, with that being said garland house appears to be confident that ripple will be able to secure a victory over the regulatory watchdog in addition, Garling House, a former senior vice president of Yahoo, says that he wouldn't want to base his new cryptocurrency company in the U.S. if he were to launch one. He has reiterated that the lack of leadership in the blockchain industry is bad for the country. Quote, the nature of the U.S. participation in the Internet, as we know today, has been a source of massive profits. It's been a source of geopolitical strength. And so our I think our lack of leadership around the next generation tech like blockchain is not good for the United States, which might really be why they will lose potentially their world reserve currency status in a couple of years from now. The reason I'm sometimes putting that up is because if you think about it, all the big freaking uh, leaders in the internet realm right now, yeah, for anybody that's not from, I'm, I'm going to say China, uh, it's most likely going to be a US based company right? Most of the ones leading. I'm not talking about every single payment company or every single big company out there, but if you're really putting up a good list of what websites are most used around the internet, I'm going to already quickly claim here Google and a Facebook and a YouTube, for example. That's just a, to pick a handful of things. If you're talking more social media, Instagram, uh, a Snapchat, uh, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll keep it at that because TikTok is, I guess, not from there. But most of them are coming from the US, so they have a pretty big role in all of that. Now there's a new technology coming up and all of a sudden they're just taking their hands off and being like, well, we'll see. It's a little bit strange, right? Especially for the U.S. as they're really progressive normally. Uh, on a side note, if we're actually talking about progressive and, you know, the, the future and we were talking about some profitable things, Engine, not a coin I personally have a lot of, honestly speaking, but I personally do think that it's a pretty good one to have. Once more, I'm not saying you should buy it. I'm just saying if I'm really looking from the core of my heart, is it a good one to hold? Yes. All right, because NFTs are getting extremely popular and Engine is basically what a lot of people use as the baseline for all of this. Uh, it's been a pretty old platform. I actually used to have a ton of it and then threw it away a little bit later because, hey, you sometimes do stupid stuff in your life. And all of a sudden, it has found its its fame again. Uh, we talked about this in Discord a couple years ago. People were buying it like crazy and memeing around with it. But since NFTs took off right now, yeah, it, it definitely could be one of the ones to hold closely as I don't think the big... Um, NFT spark is over just quite yet. So again, I'm just quickly telling people, take a good look at it, uh, maybe hold a little bit of it. And by the way, thinking of Prime XBT, this is the platform I trade on right now all the time. If you're thinking of trading crypto full time, whatever, or just buying crypto with, with leverage, go check out Prime XBT. I personally am using this one as the only one right now because hey, as I said before, it works like a freaking charm. A lot of customizable widgets, 
I don't know if you need it or not, but it's pretty damn simple. Mostly I use it though because Binance crashes quite often and I don't want to be disturbed when I'm trading. Uh, so this one works like a freaking charm. If you're from the US, I think you need to use a VPN, but just check that stuff out, all right? Go check it out. There's also a pretty huge 50% deposit bonus for like a, a little while. So go check it out. A link will be down below. I am personally using it though. Works like a freaking charm. Then Coinbase Ventures VCs pile $2 million into DeFi platform Saffron sources. <laughs> Saffron finishes a fundraising round to help it bring traditional finance investors into the DeFi space. Sources say it raised more than $2 million, which is something I really enjoy hearing about, hearing about because whenever I see Coinbase Ventures investing, I want to also put a little bit of money into it. Uh, but that is only when a coin comes out, right? But once Coinbase backs a coin, I will always, whenever I get the chance, put some money into the coin day one when it comes out, if not earlier, all right? A lot of the times you don't get the chance to buy in earlier, but Coinbase is on a freaking roll. And a lot of the coins that they support get a pretty good boost. Um, I don't have a couple of good examples right now for you, but they're there. I talk about them all the time on the channel, but right now I have a little bit of a brain freeze. But a lot of Coinbase backed, well, Coinbase, all right, yeah. Sort of like a little bit of an Australian. Uh, a lot of Coinbase backed projects, they just prosper after like a couple weeks in. All right. So once more, a little bit of a, of a dusty type of strategy is follow Coinbase whenever coins go live. It usually works out. And let's say it's a freaking 50-50, which it isn't. That would still leave us in a ton of profit because those coins on average do at least like times seven. So there's that. Uh, PayPal plans to develop extremely advanced crypto app. I saw a ton of talks come by around this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it over on 5-Minute Crypto later. So if you want more info, go check it out there because it will be covered. But yeah, PayPal is on a freaking roll. A paraphrase from his comments, which have been stated earlier, which I'll talk about later. Later in this month, our Venmo credit card will be available to 100% of our base. And in the coming months, we will launch the ability to buy, hold, and sell crypto via the Venmo app. And finally, our revamped pay with Venmo experience will launch in Q2, offering a best-in-class checkout experience. Uh, that is the uh, Venmo part of things. Think about it, guys. These, these things will not stop. These things will not stop. PayPal is going to rule a lot eventually. Don't miss out, all right? And and what I'm saying don't miss out is, I mean, don't miss out on the news and potentially the stock profit as well from PayPal. That could be a thing. Uh, but it's all over the news right now. It's going everywhere because PayPal just acquired crypto security firm Curve for nearly $200 million. PayPal's purchase of Curve is part of the company's larger crypto ambitions, which include working with central banks on digital currency. What are they going to do in that regard? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's interesting. Mark Cuban sees $1 written in Doge's tea leaves. <laughs> okay. He says, if we sell another 6.5 billion Doge worth of Mavs merch, Dogecoin would definitely hit a, a dollar. Okay. Uh, and then new IRS operation threatens crypto tax dodgers with jail. If you're a tax fraudster, better close your eyes because this type of stuff is ridiculously scary. I'm going to just recommend you guys all to read through it, read into it, because you don't want to be doing something wrong, especially if your plan is not to do anything wrong. So... Keep checking it out. That's all I'm trying to say. Keep checking it out. Keep updating yourself because what if you're eventually too late, all right? The, the, the consequences might be really, really hefty and I don't want that to happen to you guys, all right? So please check it out properly or consult a guy like that if you need it. Just check it out and please, guys, if you need any help, look for professional help. It is almost always going to be worth it and a guy on YouTube like me or somebody else on YouTube is not going to be able to help you properly. Um, maybe use the tax website, the official one for your country. It depends on whatever you're in. And just kind of browse through that because they'll most likely have a pretty big section on crypto nowadays. Otherwise, again, look up the official people. Don't mess around with this type of stuff if you don't have to. Um, or I don't, know. I don't know. I don't want to say ask your friends or ask somebody else because, again, those are not advisors. So they might mess you up in the end of things. Even though they want to help you out, they might not be able to. Having said that, once more, go check out Prime XBT. A link will be down below. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. This is just for trading, by the way. It's not like a scary platform, not, not something strange. It's just trading, but you can also do some analysis, which some people like, I've noticed. <laughs> you can do a lot of things on here. It's just the charting feature. Uh, you have the co-vesting, which I personally don't use, but hey, maybe that's something for you. Not too sure, but it could be. There's the turbo feature, which still is getting on my nerves because I always mess up. You can see I've, I've been trying for a little bit. It's just free money anyway. But it's freaking annoying, right? Every time you think you're going to win it and then, no, oh, you don't. 
So I cannot necessarily recommend that, but the training is what I use it for just because it's so convenient and it doesn't go down. It's so easy. Just press freaking buy and everything works out itself. It literally is the simplest thing you can do. You also have a couple other ways to buy it. You'll see though. Once you make an account, everything will just figure itself out. Just go check it out and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video.